I'm Dr. Mark J. Gannon, the director of the Low Vision Institute in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I'd like to begin by talking a little bit about the anatomy of the eye and the macula and the way that it functions so that we can give you a little better idea of how it relates to low vision. An eye itself is about the size of a ping pong ball. It's about an inch and a quarter in diameter. If we were to cut an eye in half, the back half inside has a very thin lining of tissue. And that thin tissue lining is the retina of your eye. The retina is about a tenth of the thickness of a piece of saran wrap, so it's very thin. But it contains more than 125 million cells. And when light hits a retinal cell, it creates a little electrical impulse that travels from the eye back to the brain along a fiber of the optic nerve. The brain may receive thousands to hundreds of thousands of messages all at once. And by integrating them together, it creates images, which is what we know as sight. So sight takes place in the brain, not in the eye. In the very center of the retina, there's a tiny area that's no bigger than the head of a pin, but it contains more than half of all the cells in the retina. Millions and millions of cells very tightly squeezed together in this very tiny area. That's the macula. So the macula is the center of the retina all the way in the back of your eye. When you look directly at an object, your eye and brain coordinate together, and the brain aims the macula at whatever you're trying to see. Once it does that, we establish direction. We call the direction we're looking central vision. And when the brain knows what's in the center, it automatically knows what surrounds it, which we refer to as peripheral vision. So the first function of your macula is direction. The second function is fine detail. Because there are so many cells so tightly squeezed together, everything that we do that involves detail, reading and writing and TV and movies and driving, are all functions of the macula. Plus, most of the cells we refer to as cone cells, responsible for color vision, are in the macula too. So the three main functions of your macula are direction, fine detail, and color. When we as doctors talk about the retina, we think of it as being a bullseye target, where the bullseye in the center is the macula. And each ring on the target, away from the macula we go, we have a zone with fewer cells. And when we're about 10 rings out, we're at the very edges of the retina, which have no cells at all, so they're blind, which is normal. But from there, the closer we return to center, the more cells we have, therefore the more sensitive the retina becomes until we're back at the macula, where it's by far the most sensitive of all. I'm going to show you a little diagram. And in the diagram, we're going to describe the retina and the way that it functions and, uh, and give you a little better idea so that we can put this all together. This is a diagram of the central part of the retina. This picture is about 8 inches in diameter. But if we drew the entire retina to scale, the picture would be about 2 feet in diameter. In the center, we've drawn a little target about the size of a dime. It would then represent the macula at that scale. If everything is healthy and normal, and a patient were to look at a word, and I've written the word house here in the center of the diagram, right where the macula is, light would focus to the macula, the brain would get the information it needs, and of course we would be able to read the word. However, in macular degeneration, we lose that tissue, and frequently we lose a lot of the tissue surrounding it. This creates a hole right in the middle of our vision. So no matter where we look, there's basically nothing there. Off to the side, I've drawn a little area that looks like an island. We call that an eccentric fixation point. Eccentric means off of center. And this is a little area that contains cells that are healthy and normal, that were spared from degenerating. And I'll explain their importance in a moment to you. Traditionally, in low vision, we make letters very large, sometimes 40 or 50 times their size. When we do that, we get so much of the letter on healthy tissue around the dead center that even though a small part of the letter is missing, enough of it is present that the brain can fill in the little missing part and we can read the letter. The downside to this is when we make letters that large, we only see one or two letters at a time. So reading becomes a very difficult and cumbersome task. What I try to do that's a little different is I look for those little healthy islands off to the side. 
And if I can find one, instead of magnifying the letters 30 or 40 times, we may only need to magnify them three or four. But at that point, we can see whole words again instead of single letters. So the advantage is it's much more natural and efficient. But the drawback is that even though that area may exist, the brain doesn't recognize its presence and continues to aim the dead macula. So our challenge in these patients is to teach the eye and the brain to re-coordinate so the brain will aim the healthy tissue instead of the dead macular tissue. And we're very successful in doing that. When I evaluate patients, I put their eyes into one of three different categories. The first is the worst and the biggest, representing four of every 10 patients that I see. And those patients have so much degeneration in the center of the better eye that we have to go sometimes halfway across the retina to find an area of tissue that's healthy. In those patients, not only do I have to teach them to look way out to the side, but to view very large letters one at a time way out there. So getting them to be able to read is next to impossible and chances for success are below 10%. The second group, which represents three of every 10 patients, has a healthy area close to center. When we find that, our ability to teach the patients to use those areas efficiently is better than 80% successful. So as a group, they do very, very well. And the last group, which also represents three out of 10 or 30%, has a macula that instead of looking like a moth got in there and ate a hole and left a bunch of scars behind, it looks more like somebody sprinkled some salt and pepper there, where the areas of pepper are areas of degeneration, but they're mixed with areas of healthy tissue. Those patients still look on center, but require a little more magnification and better lighting, and they're 100% successful. So what we've established or discussed or described is a means of correcting vision that's lost centrally by utilizing areas of the periphery and essentially restoring visual function. And the important thought to take away with you in that particular regard is there is new hope in sight.